Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so I was sitting down and getting ready to work on a video for today and I was having one of those mornings where I was just not in the mood, you know what I mean? Like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you have a headache, and you just really don't want to do anything. My choices were Yorick's rework retrospective or Hated Champions 3, and frankly, I'm just in the mood to do the second one because it's easier to complain about champions. Yes, I know I said in the last video I wasn't going to do a part 3, but after I made a poll for badly designed abilities 2 asking if you want to see a part 3, I thought we could repeat this one too. Besides, there's still a ton of champions I have a bone to pick with, so I'm going to be lazy today and work on League's Most Hated Champions Part 3. Since it's been a while, to reiterate, this video will be subjective to some degree, but I'm not necessarily trying to list champions that I myself hate, rather, I want to talk about the ones that get the most vitriol from the general player base. That being said, I am biased. One of my viewers sent me something interesting though. A Reddit user by the name of I Waste My Money, I'm guessing they play gacha games, made a poll asking every single subreddit main what their 5 most hated champions were. And from that, they compiled the dossier of the results of almost every single one. Funnily enough, the most commonly despised champion overall was Shaco. Sounds about right. Anyways, just like the last time, current performance will not be taken into consideration. It doesn't matter if the champion is strong or weak at the present moment, that's circumstantial. Instead, we'll be looking at their history. Have they, for a significant period of time, been the target of everyone's frustration and rage? With that said, I have 9 champions prepared for today. Again, everyone in League's roster has 1 in 2 people who hold a personal grudge, so I will end up missing a few. But if you haven't checked out either of my previous episodes, there might be a chance I talked about your arch nemesis there. Enough talk though, let's commence with the complaining. Not as public enemy number 1 as he used to be, but it wouldn't be a series worth its salt if I didn't mention League's tiny little demon, Teemo. If there's anyone who gets hate, it's this guy. So much so that Riot themselves acknowledge how much of a piece of shit he is and even sold merch of him at one point. I have one of these actually. Nowadays though, it's more of an endearing kind of hate. People find him more annoying than rage inducing since he's been power crept out of the game for some time, replaced with a lineup of 200 years of collective game design experience. Even so, Teemo belongs in the category of ranged top laners and is a big slap in the face to anyone who relies exclusively on auto attacks for damage. Blinding Dart inflicts high damage and binds you for up to 3 seconds on a 7 second cooldown which is pretty low for a range point and click ability. Move Quick and Toxic Shot grant him a strong neutral game, making it so in order to beat him you either have to play a ranged champion yourself or hard engage him with someone capable of face tanking his damage like Trindaban. No one between. Then in the mid to late game you have to essentially play the floor as lava, 5 oracles and control wards as far as the eye can see because a single magic mushroom can shred through half your health bar as a squishy. Mind you, he's not the deadliest or even the most difficult range top lane to go up against. Like I said, he's more annoying than anything else. But it's for the sake of posterity. Moving on, let's talk about everyone's favorite edgelord for Viego, Kane. If you were around during the summer of Season 11, this guy terrorized the jungle with his Gore Drinker Muramana Blue Kane build, one-shotting teams with basically zero effort or risk to him. Kane's MO can be described very simply. In early game, get form, then 1v9. He is one of the most easy to understand kits in the game that can be used for different purposes. Red form makes him a drain tanking raid boss that shreds through even the toughest frontline, while blue form makes him a hyper mobile assassin with the most brain dead burst rotation in the game. W, Q, auto, and umbral trespass lets you stall for time to get your cooldowns back all while doing very significant damage itself and healing you back to almost full if you're in red form. In many instances, he plays almost like a stat checker. There aren't that many different ways you can handle Kane besides being more fed than he is. Sure, he is one of the weakest early games out of any jungler, but the power spike he gets from either transformation is staggering. I already talked about how Shadow Step is a terribly designed ability in episode 2. One of the biggest facets to learning jungle is minimizing the time it takes for you to get to where you need to be. High elo junglers spend dozens of games optimizing their clear and rotation speed. And then you have Kane who walks through walls, giving him so many more approach options that no other jungler will have. In all honesty, the only thing keeping him from being overpowered is that his early game is so exploitable. If he started level 1 in either blue or red form, he would have to lose half his power budget to remain balanced. Next one is going to be Irelia. I made a rework retrospective not too long ago and I'm more or less going to repeat what I said in that video here. What causes her to be such a balanced nightmare is how hyper consistent her design is. Blade Surge gives her a much wider threat bubble than that of even some ranged champions as she can dash 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times maybe even more. Her Q applies on hit effects while healing her with each cast. They made a whole meme about it and it's understandable why. She simply has far more options than most champions. See, divers are generally kept in check by the fact that their engage is also their burst damage. Champions like Jarvan and Vi, they can definitely close long distances with their combos, but once they're in the thick of things, they've exhausted a lot of their resources already. Irelia is a diver with a DPS uptime of a skirmisher. She can itemize all sorts of different paths, bruiser, on hit, sometimes crit. 
Her presence in Master, Grandmaster, and Challenger is almost always top 5 because of her high carry potential, extreme mobility, and the ability to bypass a lot of hurdles by virtue of her kit. Some people like to argue that you just need to dodge her stun and you'll win, which certainly does mitigate a lot of her pressure, but that doesn't detract from everything else she can do. Irelia is easily able to recover from behind due to her great scaling and how easy it is to farm with her, and if she sets up her engage properly, there's basically no counter. That's what I mean by hyper consistent. The players may not be consistent with her, but she is as a champion, no matter how much she gets nerfed. Speaking of consistency, let's talk about Zed. There's one thing about Zed that sets him apart from other assassins, neutral. For the uninitiated, neutral is a term used to describe the phase during gameplay when neither player or team has a situational advantage over the other, like during laning phase, or when both players are just farming, or when you're trying to contest dragon or baron and both teams are spacing back and forth waiting for some dumbass to get caught. Assassins generally have a bad neutral game and disadvantage to offset their ridiculous advantage state, as in they're one of the strongest classes when attacking. Next to Kha'Zix, Zed is one of the few exceptions. Razor Shuriken combined with Living Shadow grants him a safe and effective way to wave clear and harass, with a maximum cast range of over 1500, as high as artillery mages. With enough ability haste, he can throw 2 rounds of Shuriken per shadow, and this doesn't come at the cost of his burst rotation in any way. He's able to efficiently make use of either playstyle at a moment's notice, sometimes one right after another. Throw W, E, Q to damage your target from afar, then you can blink to your shadow and extend the combo. Other assassins don't really have this privilege, and if they do, it's not as long-reaching or as dangerous as Zed's, which is why he's almost always the most popular assassin of choice in the mid lane regardless of the meta. There's also of course the fact that he's an energy user, theoretically granting him an infinite supply of resources as long as he rations it. Combined with the two mid-range blinks, he has the perfect assortment of damage, range, mobility, and defensive tools. Much like Aurelia, Zed's hard to play well, which is really the only thing keeping him from becoming overpowered. This next pick might confuse a lot of you if you don't play support. Well honestly, I think even non-support see this champion. Unlike the last three we just went over, her notoriety doesn't stem from being 1v9 or super crazy overpowered. Far from it. Morgana is a very fair and balanced champion in that she has one job, nullification. Dark Binding and Soul Shackles are fantastic lockdown abilities, the former of which is well known for how long it lasts, a 1300 range 10 second cooldown skill shot that roots you in place for up to 3 seconds, the second longest duration in the game only after a max distance ash ult. Then we have Black Shield, which absorbs only magic damage but grants the target total crowd control immunity while the shield holds, and it negates crowd control effects before any magic damage is taken except shield busters like Renekton W or Blitz Alt. That means, even against AP champs, it will block at least one instance of crowd control, and against AD champions, it's no different from Olaf's ultimate as it lasts for roughly the same time. She's essentially a big f you to a lot of engaged supports like Leona, Nautilus, Blitzcrank, Thrash, Alistar, and so on. Dark Binding locks you in place, preventing you from engaging, and even if you dodge that, if you engage, she simply black shields herself or her ADC and cast ultimate. One of, if not the best anti-engage champion in the game, which is why engaged support players hate her so much. Oh, and while we're on the subject of not being allowed to do anything, let's talk about Trindamir. RNG, a big ball of stats, 5 seconds of death immunity, ridiculously good sustain, and a dash that has virtually no cooldown in the late game. There's a reason people want him reworked. Trindamir wasn't always like this though. Only recently did things start to get pretty bad. Season 11's mythic item changes were really nice to him, giving him an actual decent first purchase in the form of either Kraken Slayer or Gale Force. He's also one of, like, only two champions in the game who can actually make use of Navori Quick Blaze, which, if you didn't know, is the item with the Spirit Shojin passive. Then you wrap it up with Infinity Edge, and boom, at three items he has over almost like 400 attack damage, 100% crit chance, and his spinning slash is on two second cooldown. Compound that with changes to things like Lethal Tempo, and he went from someone with a terrible early game to someone with a pretty dang strong one while scaling like a mofo in the late game. I think most top laners can agree with me when I say that Trin's kinda like a skill check. That is, he tests how good your fundamentals are, and more importantly, your patience. In lane, you have to know your windows of opportunity to exploit him, and in the mid to late game, your team has to coordinate properly to shut him down. It's easy to do, it's just really tiresome. Then again, 5 seconds of death immunity lets him pull way too much BS such as diving you under tower for free. He's inherently just really unpleasant and frustrating to face. If he gets a single kill on you, there's nothing you can do. And the only really consistent way to beat him in lane is usually with another stat checker like Malphite, Nasus, or someone with cheese like Quinn, Teemo, or Vaintop. Very obnoxious champions for no reason other than cheese. Continuing down the list, I want to bring up Silas. Silas may seem like a strange choice to some of you right now, but he's definitely had a long history of problems. At a glance, he's a very easy champion to play in terms of his default kit. Great mobility with not one, 
Not two, but three dashes. Amazing sustain thanks to Kingslayer, solid DPS with his passive, a surprisingly solid mid-range poke tool with Chain Lash, and lest we forget, his amazing ultimate, allowing him to copy his opponent's ultimates, sometimes using them even better than they would. At times, he seems too effective for how simple he is to play, starting with his ridiculously high base damage and AP scaling. Chain Lash can strike you for 410 plus 130% by itself if you land both the strike and explosion. Kingslayer has a base 90% AP ratio for damage and 80% for healing. A duck does 100% AP scaling as well. These ratios are beyond ridiculous to have, and before you say that both his Q and E are skill shots that can easily miss, remember that he rushes Everfrost, essentially guaranteeing he can land his full combo almost all the time, as even if you miss the root, the 65% slow is more than enough to drag your pace down to a crawl. The problem is, due to his status as a hard engaged melee champion, he kinda needs those ratios to stay relevant. But it also means if he gets an early lead, he snowballs out of control. If he also manages to get his hands on a lot of good ultimates such as Cho'Goth, Trinimir, Twisted Fate, Karthus, Malphite, Fiddlesticks, that further amplifies how destructive he could be. A lot of those ultimates are balanced for being on those specific champions. For example, Fiddlesticks is pretty slow for all intents and purposes. Now imagine attaching his Crow Storm to Silas who has 3 dashes, allowing him to stay on top of you non-stop. It makes for a fun experience if you play him, but playing against him can be rage inducing. You know what, if Silas is on this list, so should Viego. Forget stealing ultimates, let's steal entire champions. I'm sure by now many of you are sick of hearing me talk about Viego, but I don't freaking care. In all honesty, Viego's base kit is really not all that bad. If it were just his Q, W, E, and ultimate, I think most of us would say he's more or less in the same line as other skirmishers. Yeah, he's got a lot of persistent damage and can one-shot you if he's fed, but I mean, so does Fiora, Jax, Aurelia, and such, so it's not that much different. It's Sovereign's domination where things become a problem. If he so much as gets one takedown on a champion, he gets one second of untarget ability, regenerates a large amount of health, especially if the victim was a bruiser or a tank, then immediately gains unrestricted access to three fresh abilities and a recast on his ultimate which, depending on who it is, makes it all the more easy for him to secure further souls. He's the only champion whose reset counterplay changes with each cast. Unlike Piker Katarina, who stay as Piker Katarina, Viego can change to Thresh and acquire his items, forcing you to account for the fact that he's no longer Viego and therefore any countermeasures you take against him have to adapt to whoever he is now. At any point in time after a couple seconds, he can just discard his current form using Heartbreaker, it's not like he's stuck on that champion for a set time. Sometimes you see Viego players picking up souls just for the heals and quick ability casts. For example, he scores a takedown on Silas, transforms into him, then uses his 3 dashes to get close to his next target, and quickly drops him for his normal abilities. In other words, if your team is very aggressive, he turns your own strength against you while losing none of his own. To this day, I have no idea what went on in the minds of Riot when they released his champion. Last, and most certainly, most indubitably, most unequivocally, least. The man, the myth, the 200 years, the meme, the ongoing gag on my channel, Yona, the bane of my existence. It's funny. I still get people who think that I'm salty about this guy because I suck at beating him when I play champions who myrtleize him like it's a Tuesday morning. If I'm allowed one personally biased pick, it's this guy. Just a reminder of what exists in this man's kit. Hybrid damage on his auto attacks, W, and ultimate. Max crit chance with two items. Manalist champion with no cost abilities. Attack speed based cooldown on his Q and W. Two forms of wide range AoE crowd control. Percent health damage on his W that gives him a shield for every champion hit in a wide cone. Three dashes, one of which allows him to dive into the heat of battle and blink back to safety after he destroys your team with ramping movement speed and a damage echo. Bro, why do people genuinely believe Yone is a well-balanced champion just because he has less than a 50% win rate? Akali had a 47% win rate ever since she was reworked and she was one of the most broken assassins in the game for a very long time. I know I sound pissed, because I am pissed. Yone is a terribly designed champion, even more so than Viego, Akshan, Guan, Nefelios, this guy is everything wrong with modern champion design. He makes his younger brother look perfectly fine. I mean, in fairness, Yasuo is actually pretty well designed, it's just his win wall that grinds people's gears most of the time. Tempest or Jaeger, if you're watching this, you guys are awesome, but damn you and your main. You know, 1000% this champion is overloaded as hell. This is the hill I am more than proud to die on. But in all seriousness, that's it for today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the champions on this list. A common trait I noticed about hated champions is that they have something in their kit that provides them a disproportionately unfair advantage against their opponent relative to the skill required to execute on it. For example, Morgana's Black Shield invalidates the single most effective form of counterplay for a lot of champions. Zed is a melee assassin who can outrange a lot of mages. Trindamir gets over 7,000 golden free stats just by existing. Things like that. It's usually how frustrating they are to play against most of the time. I think it's funny that even with all the overloaded releases we've had, Shaco is still the most hated champion in the game, though I share the same feeling. I don't know a single person who isn't a Shaco main that unironically likes him. 
We're gonna end off here though. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my previous Hated Champions episodes. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.